so I can sit right here inside my car and I can see what everyone's typing on their computers inside that office building. I'm watching it on my phone and their endpoint protection doesn't even detect what I'm doing. Let's head back to the office and I'll tell you how I'm doing it. You see, if you aren't thinking about physical security, you are making a huge mistake. Before we get started, be sure that you subscribe, you hit the bell notification so that you're notified as we release future videos. I know you can get so busy focusing on traditional infosec, ransomware, phishing, all of the different types of cyber attacks that you completely forget a very, very important aspect of information security. Physical access. If an attacker can get physical access to a computer system, a device on your network, in most cases, it's pretty much game over. So now let's take a look at a really nice hacking tool that I use on penetration tests anytime I get the opportunity. It's a USB hardware keylogger and it has Wi-Fi access. So I can simply plug it in, go outside, come back to the building the next day, connect to it on my Wi-Fi from my phone, and I get usernames, passwords, and anything else that the target with this device plugged in typed into their keyboard. It sounds really neat, doesn't it? So what is a keylogger? A keylogger is any kind of software, hardware, or any device that logs the keystrokes that are put into a system. Traditionally, when you think of a keylogger, you would think of some kind of malware on a computer. The malware is some kind of software that has been installed on a computer by a bad actor, maybe through a phishing, through a link, through PowerShell, however they might do it, and it logs keystrokes and it sends those keystrokes either to a file on the system that can be retrieved, or maybe it relays them back to a command and control infrastructure. That's what you would typically think of for a keylogger, right? But there are other types. One of the very difficult things nowadays is if an organization has a really good endpoint protection what we used to call antivirus, now we call EDR, endpoint detection and response. If they have a really good one, it can be very, very hard to get malware onto those systems. Yes, there are still attacks you can use. You can use PowerShell, bypass it. You could do a phishing engagement, disable the EDR, but it's more work and a lot more steps. Not only do you have to get that malware to run on the system, bypass their endpoint protection, but you even have to get it on the system to begin with through some kind of a payload through an email, through a drive-by download, some kind of way to get that malware onto the system. As you know, emails are getting a lot better at detecting actual malware in email components. It can be very, very hard without pretty good social engineering skills to get someone to download malware via an email. Same thing with drive-by downloads. Browsers are getting better at security. Now, there still are vulnerabilities, don't get me wrong, but it's not as easy as it used to be. So several years ago, while I was preparing for penetration test at a bank where we were doing an internal assessment, which included physical access to workstations, I came across the AirDrive hardware keylogger. And the nice thing about a hardware keylogger is it completely bypasses most endpoint detection and security systems because it's not software, it's hardware. It is a, it's like a peripheral of the computer system so you don't have to install it actually. The premise for this particular contest or engagement were that we were going to test the security team and their incident detection and response to see how quickly they could detect rogue devices inside the network. We planted lots of devices throughout parts of the network where we could get access to, and we timed how long it took the security team to find them and discover them and disable them. These devices would plug into the network, start beaconing out to my command control infrastructure, and that's how I knew what was going on. And their security was pretty good. They pretty quickly found all of my implants, but one, my hardware keylogger. So while there are probably lots of hardware keyloggers, the AirDrive USB keylogger from KeePass is the one that I've been using for the last couple of years. I like it because it's hardware based. Like we've talked about, it's not software. I don't have to install it on systems. The particular version I use has Wi-Fi access, so it can serve as a Wi-Fi client or a Wi-Fi server. As a Wi-Fi client, this is great because if I've already cracked the password of the organization, their Wi-Fi, and I've figured out they don't have really robust security, they're not gonna block this device, I can add it as a client onto their Wi-Fi. Then I can go and set up an email via some kind of SMTP with Gmail, Outlook, etc., and 
I never have to come back except to pick up my device when the engagement is over because it will email me its results on a daily basis. I set up the SMTP, I configure the credentials that are necessary, the permissions, etc. And every day it will email me a copy of its findings, what it has logged on that device. You should probably be careful. Be sure you're using encrypted email if you do something like this. You don't want confidential information of your clients to be leaked via email. So that's something to keep in mind if you do that. Or I can put it in Wi-Fi server mode. In Wi-Fi server mode, the AirDrive by KeePass will put out its own Wi-Fi signal. I can change the name of this network, make it blend in. If I know an employee who works in the vicinity of where I'm gonna be implanting this device, maybe I will name my Wi-Fi to look like their phone's hotspot so that it won't trip off alarms if their Wi-Fi security sees a new access point. They'll think it's an employee's mobile device. What I do is I plug it in, I set up the Wi-Fi server, and then all I have to do is come within some vicinity of that area inside the building or even outside. I can, I can come to the parking lot and I can connect via my phone to that, download all of the keystrokes that have been added since the last time I came, and I'm good to go. I have credentials, passwords, and I can continue pivoting into the organization. To install this USB keylogger, all it takes is physical access to the system that I want for a couple of seconds, 10 seconds maybe. All I have to do, unplug the USB keyboard, plug in my AirDrive keypass, plug the USB keyboard into my keypass, and we're good to go. If this is on the back of a computer, like most people have their keyboards, it is very likely that this could go undetected for an unknown amount of time, a long, long time. So keep that in mind. Maybe you should periodically check the back of your computer for any new devices plugged in. If people have access to public areas, it is very possible that they could slip in, reach around, unplug the keyboard, plug in a hardware keylogger, plug the keyboard back in without the person even noticing. If this is a public kiosk or something, they could have one person come up, make a distraction, talk to this individual while they reach over, plug this in really fast. And no one would be all the wiser. It does not take long to install this kind of a keylogger. Or they could pay house cleaning. If I showed up to the after hours to your building and I had $250, and I asked house cleaning to plug this into a certain computer, plug the keyboard into it, it's pretty possible that they would take me up on that offer. So how could you prevent something like a USB hardware keylogger from being installed on your systems? If you have a public area where people have access, you might want to look into USB locks. These are a, they look like a USB, but they actually have a lock in them. So you plug them into your USB ports. Then you plug the device that you want to plug in and you it has a little lock and that has little teeth that reach up into both those USB devices so that you can not unplug either one. That would completely disable an attacker from doing this kind of an attack. Alternately, you could use USB restrictions based on the hardware ID or the device ID. You can do this via a GPO if you're using Active Directory or even some endpoint protections will allow you to restrict USBs. So don't forget about physical security. When you're working on securing your organization, be sure that you take the physical security aspect into mind. There are many more attacks that I can do as an attacker if I have physical access to a system. A hardware keylogger is only one, and it's only the beginning. 